It's important to prepare your biosafety cabinet and make sure all the safeguards are in place before you begin working. First, check the expiration date on the certification label. If the date has expired, do not proceed. Next, turn on the fluorescent light and blower fan. Allow a minimum of 10 minutes to purge the air from the cabinet. Check the magnahelic gauge to ensure that the reading indicated on the gauge is plus or minus 10% of the value noted on the certification label. Check the alarms if your cabinet is equipped with them. Decontaminate the interior work surfaces, the sides, bottom, and sash only with an appropriate decontamination agent. If 10% bleach is used, rinse the surfaces with either a 70% ethanol water or water rinse. Wipe down the equipment and non-sterile supplies with the decontamination agent. Load the cabinet clean to dirty with work taking place at least six inches back from the front grill. Place bulky items to one side or to the rear of the cabinet. Place aerosol generating equipment toward the rear of the cabinet as well. Check that the front and back grills are open and not blocked. Then check the magnahelic gauge again and check for airflow at the front grill by using a tissue. Finally, arrange your stool height so that your chin is above the bottom of the sash. When you work inside your biosafety cabinet, good aseptic techniques should always be practiced. When you begin, don two pairs of nitrile gloves. Whenever you place your arms inside the cabinet, pause for a few seconds to allow the air currents to stabilize. Always work clean to dirty. Use slow, deliberate movements. Avoid working over open containers. And avoid frequent moving in and out of the cabinet. When you clean up a small biological spill in a containment device, such as a biological safety cabinet or a centrifuge, carefully follow these steps. First, stop work and remove your gloves. And then don a clean pair of gloves and place paper towels and tongs in the containment device. If the containment device is a biological safety cabinet, the decontamination agent should already be in the cabinet. If the container is not broken, pick it up and cap or seal it. Carefully cover the spill area with paper towels, starting from the outside of the spill and working inward toward the center. Then, gently apply the appropriate decontamination solution to the paper towels. Allow the solution to contact the spill for at least 30 minutes, 60 minutes for spore formers. Next, Gently pick up the paper towels with tongs and place the towels in a biohazard waste bag. Then apply the decontamination agent to the spill area and place towels appropriately. Use tongs to place the towels in a biohazard waste bag. Repeat this process at least once. Finally, take the primary container that spilled and wipe it down with the decontamination agent. Then place the container in a biohazard waste bag. When you clean up and shut down your biosafety cabinet, first, surface decontaminate all the materials and equipment. And then place the towels used for decontamination in the biohazard waste container. If used, pick up the absorbent paper and place it in the biohazard waste bag. Remove your outer pair of gloves 
and also place them in the biohazard waste bag. Close the biohazard waste bag and or liquid waste container, wipe them with the decontamination agent, and place autoclave tape around the top. Decontaminate all interior work surfaces with an appropriate decontamination agent. If 10% bleach is used, follow with a 70% ethanol water or water rinse. Remove your inner pair of gloves and place them in the non-hazardous bio-waste container. Transport dry waste to the autoclave. Allow liquid waste to sit for a minimum of 30 minutes, 60 minutes for spore formers. Then, allow the blower fan to run at least 5 minutes to purge the cabinet. And finally, turn off the light and blower fan.